So in this case, the source, the Big Buck Bunny uh, movie, this will both be audio and video. Um, type find is a helper element that matches the inputs and outputs. Um, so the outputs from the file source to the inputs of the AVI demuxer. And so since it's demuxing it, it's actually creating two streams, an audio stream and a video stream. So here I'm naming the audio stream demux audio. And um, I then queue the data and I find an appropriate um, decoder for the encoded audio, pass it to the TI audio decoder, which converts it, and then it sends it out the also sync, if you look. Then we have to um, also have the pipeline for the video. And in this case, the video, again, uses a helper, func helper element type find uh, to get the inputs and outputs of the um, two elements so they can talk to each other. It then passes it through the TI video decoder, which goes to the TI video sync. And it has some specifications of, of uh, parameters of where it wants to go. In this case, it's VGA resolution going to the LCD output. And you can see that there's an accelerated frame copy option where we're using that so we don't have to use the arm to move the data around. So that's a, a pretty complex and complete example of what's possible. Um, when you develop your application, you would actually use some of the GStreamer APIs that effectively allow you to make the same pipeline. But then you can um, register for events, uh, start of start playing, end of stream, and you can provide some controls over the pipeline as well, like seeking, for example. So that's a really quick overview of GStreamer. Um, are there any questions? There's one question from the IRC. Is that, do you have any comments on uh, uh, using uh, DSP Bridge or using DSP Link? Why you might want to use one over the other? Yeah, so um, uh, way back when, when I started working on dual core processors for, with TI back in the really early 90s, we kind of had a DSP um, bridge war. What's the best approach to talking to the DSP? Is it DSP link or DSP bridge? Um, I think um, Ridge Run developed two of their own as well, so there were tons to choose from. From a GStreamer perspective, the nice thing is you are so far away from that. That's all been abstracted away because you're using Codec Engine to worry about that. And then on top of that, you're hiding Codec Engine's complexity with DMAI and then GStreamer on top of that. So you get this very simple pipeline view. So from a GStreamer point of view, um, it is only DSP link that's possible because that's what Codec Engine is expecting. If you're writing at a lower level and you're trying to interact with the DSP directly by using either DSP Link or DSP Bridge. Um, I must admit, I haven't looked at DSP Bridge in a long time, so I'm, I'm not in a really good position to, to answer that. One last question. We're running a little bit over. Um, where is the actual frame copy taking place? Um, it depends on which processor you're using. So. Um, Oh gosh, there's probably somebody else on the phone who can, or on the bridge that can answer that in more detail than I can. But um, I do know that there isn't one blank processor, and I think in some cases we turn frame copy off because we're still uh, stomping out some bugs in some of those subsystems. Um, does someone like for the OMAP three know the specific example? Chase or? The uh, OMAP3, it, uh, it depends. It's either using the, uh, the ISP or with like BeagleBoard, I think it's trying to use uh, SDMA. Uh, same thing with like 355 uses SDMA, whereas 6446 uses the resizer. Basically, DMI is abstracting that for you. Under DMI, you just say, I want to do an accelerated frame copy. And it knows, based off of your processor, how to do it best, what, what hardware peripheral it can use to do that. All right. Yeah, so, so I think we should we should move uh, any follow-ups to the to the IRC. 
I'll be online if anybody has any other questions. Thanks, Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Todd. Really appreciate your presentation. Um, this